when I thought about what, um, what I wanted to talk about or what I wanted to present to y'all today, um, I kind of <clears throat> went backwards in time and I'll talk a little bit about my background before I get started to when I became the superintendent and I kind of went from there. So I'm going to talk about um, just the importance of vision and clarity as a leader and making sure you're communicating where that, you know, that vision and that leadership and, and how important that is. So, but I'm gonna back up and I'm gonna tell you a little bit about um, the Spring Branch Independent School District. We have a very unique um, system at, and, and unique school district here. And then I'll talk a little bit about myself as a leader and then we'll kind of go from there if that works. And please interrupt me, ask questions uh, anytime you, you feel like you need to. So um, the Spring Branch Independent School District, so where you're sitting right now is um, we're in West Houston, if you're not familiar with the area. Um, we're 44 very tight square miles. Um, we call ourselves the Spring Branch family. When I know that that term is used a lot, we've always used that term here in Spring Branch because we really are like a tight knit family. Um, a lot of people uh, graduate from Spring Branch <clears throat> ISD, they go off to college and I can't tell you the number of people who come back to raise their kids here. So it just speaks volume about the culture that we have and um, the belief that we're better together. We have 33,600, approximately 33,600 students. We did lose about 1,000, maybe a little less than 1,000 over uh, the course of the pandemic, but we've had kids enroll. Um, we have 2,800 teachers, about 4,500 employees. We are proud of our diversity, and I, I wanna speak a little bit to that. So we're not only ethnically diverse, um, we have approximately 59% of our students are Hispanic, um, about 20 three percent are, are white and um, we have we speak about and then we have lots of other nationalities as well um, we have over 72 languages spoken in our school district the primary one obviously is our, our Spanish and English um, and we also are very economically diverse uh, and we're really like a microcosm of the state of Texas in terms of our ethnic breakdown in terms of our EL population and in terms of our um, our economic diversity so approximately 57 percent of our students are uh, low income, they live below the poverty line. And it's unique in that um, Interstate 10, which you know, if you were coming in from out of town or coming from somewhere else in the city, it's kind of, I hate to use the term the dividing line, but that's kind of, that's kind of where you're shaking your head. It's, it's true, that's, that's sort of the, the, the part, place in our district where south of I-10, we have extremely uh, wealthy families. Some of the wealthiest families in the state of Texas live south of I-10, I primarily in the Memorial area. Out where you are here, this is uh, you know also high, a high income area, not, not as much so as the villages. And then if you go north of I-10, that's where you're gonna find the, uh, the largest part of our students who live in poverty. Although I will say that area is gentrifying and so so you're starting to see those property values go up and we see a lot of apartment complexes being torn down and homes going up. So all of that said, I just wanted you to kind of understand where we are because we're in a very unique situation here in terms of, um, in terms of, of lots of different things and I'll speak to that in a minute. But um, so that's kind of, that, that's, that's a little bit about our school district. About myself, I actually am in my 32nd year in education, so yes, I'm very old. Uh, I started my career actually down the Beltway in the Aldine Independent School District. Um, if you're familiar with the area, it's a wonderful school district. I didn't think I would ever leave, honestly. Um, and I left because just for growth opportunities, because it was suggested to me that as a leader, it might be important for you to see a, a, another way of of doing things in a different style of leadership. And Spring Branch and Aldine are very different, but they're both great school districts. So 22 years ago, I made that move and I thought, well, I'll stay in Spring Branch for a little while and then I'll, you know, apply to be a superintendent somewhere. That's what I wanted to do. Well, 22 years later, I have run every division in the school district except for a portion of Troy's and to be the CFO um, and have had lots of wonderful experiences and stepped into the superintendency in 2019. Um, I actually live in this area and I have one son who is a senior right over here at Stratford High School and will be going off to school next year. So uh, that's a little bit about myself. But I'm gonna kind of start uh, and talk about my journey a little bit and what I've learned along the way and I guess some advice as leaders um, in terms of leading during difficult times. One of the things I think I was asked to speak to is as we come out of this post-pandemic, 
era. How are we leading and how are we working through a lot of the things we know that a lot of us are dealing with? And certainly in Spring Branch, we're no different uh, than probably many of you are uh, sitting out here today. So um, <clears throat> I came into the superintendency in 2019. And um, when, I, when I came into the superintendency, we were coming off of a, of, a, of a rough patch for a number of reasons. We had some funding issues. Um, we had uh, some leadership change. Um, but what I will say is that our academics were not, not where we would want them to be. Um, we had some schools doing well. We had a lot of schools not doing well. We had, I believe, Kristen, 17, 19 schools out of our 46 that were in some form of school improvement, which in the state of Texas, is, you don't want to, that's not a list you want to be on. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we had uh, almost half of our schools were what the state would consider failing or getting pretty close. Mm -hmm. So, um, and at the time, I was coming out of, just so you know, I, I, I had run every division in the system at some point, but, but my background is an educator. So I came up, I was an elementary school teacher, taught middle school for a year, um, and I was an elementary principal. I was an area superintendent. So that's kind of the, the, the uh, pathway I came up. But I had a very unique opportunity two superintendents ago um, to actually step into the role of being the COO. So I ran all the operations of the school district, and I'm not an engineer or an architect or uh, have, any, have any experience with any of that, but I'm gonna tell you it's one of my favorite roles just because I learned so much about how the other side of the system and the backbones of the system support the front end. Uh, and I, I tell you, I regret now, I think back on some of the things that I said, like when I was a principal about the air conditioning not working properly or whatever. And I have a very different perspective and I would be a much better uh, leader at the campus level, probably in lots of ways, um, if I went back to do it again. So <laughs> um, important to know, I was coming off of, that's the role I was coming off of. Uh, so I hadn't been in academics in six years, almost going on seven when I stepped in, but I was fortunate in that um, Kristen Kraft, who's with us today, um, always allowed me to be part of the conversations in academics. So I, I continued to study, watch what they were doing, read the things they were reading. I would talk to Kristen from time to time. So I tried to keep my hands in it that way, but it was actually running the operations of the system. And so when I came, in, came into the superintendency, um, it, I had already really been studying our data and Kristen was doing such great work, but she'd only been her, in her position for a year. So she was in a prior position, a position prior to that as, as like an area superintendent. Um, so Kristen had been over academics for a year. She was trying to get her hands and handle on why all these schools were in school improvement and what were we gonna do about it and where did we need to focus. And she and I had had lots of conversations over time in her previous role just because we're both very interested in academics. Um, and so when I interviewed with the board in 2019, I actually interviewed in this room right back there uh, and um, what I told them was that uh, I felt like the system needed focus, the system needed clarity, we had way too much going on and we needed to really take a look at our data and we needed to focus on reading, writing, math and supporting, supporting our students uh, as well-rounded, you know, happy kids, making sure we're, 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 those soft skills are, are happening that we're teaching those. And <clears throat> prior to, we talked about kind of what we had been doing. So we had been doing a lot of it over the past, I would say maybe seven years prior to, over the course of two separate leadership uh, under two separate leaders in the system, doing a lot of great work in the system. So I don't want to say that. We, we were doing a lot of great work in the system, a lot of wonderful things, and certainly I stand on the shoulders of the people that were before me. But we were doing a lot of stuff. There were a lot of things going on, and so and a lot of great things going on, but there was a lot going on. And so you might go to one campus and find um, a, 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 a principal um, utilizing a program that maybe down the street they weren't using and then you might go across town and find another program and so they were all innovating and they were all doing these really creative wonderful things the problem is there was no focus in the system and we have a mobility rate with our kids of about 30 percent and so when you have kids school hopping and everyone's picking and choosing their own stuff what happens 
you don't have any continuity for your kids. Never mind the fact at a district level, when you're trying to drive, drive initiatives forward and drive programming forward, when you have 46 different programs, which is the number of schools we have, um, it, you just it can't be done. And so <clears throat> I don't think it was a lack of everybody really doing really great work and trying really, really hard to do right by kids because that absolutely was happening. But we were not focused or clear <clears throat> and our principals couldn't really tell you what we were, what they were s supposed to be focused on. I keep using the word focus, but that's a, that's super important. So that was, <clears throat> that was the context. So um, one of the first things that, that we did was um, <clears throat> we took a look at all of the things that we were doing in the system and just took stock of what was working and what wasn't. Um, we also took a look at our district's goal, which I probably should have started with that. So our district had a goal, it's really, it's really a vision of what we call T24. Um, and I don't think, let's see, um, T24, which is, which just means, and that goal was established in, in 2012, by the way. So I did not come up with that. And it is a wonderful, tremendous, uh, lofty, sky's the limit goal for our kids and it's great. So what it essentially means is that we want every kid to graduate with a technical certification, two year, four year, or military. We want them to be prepared when they leave us post-secondary that they have those four options on the table and that we've prepared them for whichever one they want to do. And so um, the question I had is are we doing that? I mean, are we preparing our kids for T24? Because our test scores, um, not just on the state test, but on multiple measures, would suggest that we weren't. Because we had approximately half of our students or more that were not making a year's growth in either reading or math. And we had not 17, 19 at schools and school improvement. So that doesn't suggest that we're hitting that T24 goal. But um, I don't know that any of us could really tell you what we were doing or not doing to try to get there. So I had that conversation with our board of trustees. I got them to agree that we had to have focus and clarity in the system and that our people need direction and guidance. They don't know where we're headed. They're all doing stuff, but the stuff isn't leading anywhere. And we know that because our results are not, are not good. I mean, at, at the end of the day, your bread and butter is in your student achievement, and the numbers are there, and the numbers don't lie, and we didn't have the numbers, not even close. There's no way we could claim we were achieving T24 for even half of our kids. So that's where we started, and we agreed <clears throat> as a superintendent and board of trustees that we were going to have the same priorities in the system, and we agreed that less is more, and we agreed that you focus on fewer things and do them really, really well rather than have all this stuff going on in the system that might be fun and cool, but isn't getting us anywhere. So we focused, decided to focus on reading, writing, math, and supporting our kid, healthy, happy kids, supporting that, that, that uh, emotional side of our students. Um, and then also at the secondary level, we knew we, knew we needed to um, revamp and um, sort of rework our career and technical education programming because at one time Spring Branch was a leader in the industry in that field and we had fallen really far behind. So and that that career and technical education component supports the T, the military, the two and the four. And so we knew we needed to do better in terms of our programming in that arena. So there were four things we were focused on and that was it. So um, that's kind of where we started. So <clears throat> started the school year really made that clear to our principals, guys, we're gonna have to stop doing some stuff in the system because it's not getting us where we need to go. And they knew it. I don't even think we really had much uh, argument or debate. People were honestly on board because principals were working super, super hard to try to do the right thing, but they weren't getting the results and they, weren't, uh, they were unsure why. And so we pulled all that back in and uh, Kristen can tell you um, the one question I would ask Anybody who walked in my office to ask if they could spend money on something, buy, you know, adopt something, go to something, uh, bring a speaker in, my question was going to be, tell me how it directly impacts those four things, the four things we're focused on. And if you can tell me that, then yeah, let's, I'm fine with it. But if you can't tell me that, then we, did, we need to just put that to the side right now and only focus on, on what, we're, what we're about. And so very little pushback. I was, was surprised. Um, a little bit, but not much. And so <clears throat> we decided to focus there. 
we begin building a very robust curriculum. Um, Kristen's team just has done an amazing job with the programming and um, our results are really, we have double digit gains and we've actually had double digit gains two years in a row through the pandemic. That just goes to show you when you're focused, you're clear and you're, you're, you have your vision and people understand what that is, that is super, super important. I'm gonna go back to 2020 and we all know March of 2020 everything shut down and everybody's life spun completely, <laughs> completely out of control so if you're a leader and if you're a leader right now and all of you all are you know that has wasn't easy on any of us so in March of 2020 so we were headed down that path in 2019 the uh, through the, throughout the fall we're gaining a lot of headway uh, we were pulling a lot of things in we were kind of cleaning out the the closets per se you know of all the things that we shouldn't didn't need to be doing and really getting laser focused on what we should be doing. When the pandemic hit, hit in March, the same thing happened here that happened in all of y'all school districts or in your companies and that everything shut down, everybody went home. And if you're a school, were, were a school district leader, you had to figure out how you were gonna completely turn the way you deliver education on a dime uh, quickly. And parents went from being very grateful for their teachers to now we're indoctrinating everybody um, and doing all these things, teaching these things we shouldn't teach, which of course, you know, I'm not saying there weren't people doing that. Um, I, don't, I don't believe we were doing that here in Spring Branch, but we're certainly not perfect. But, you know, the things got really, really, really dicey. Um, but I will say there were a lot of good that came out of that too, and that we figured out ways to do business that we would never have pushed ourselves to do before. Um, we rolled out, um, you know, technology sort of, I don't wanna really call it a one-to-one, one -one, but we were able to roll out technology that we were struggling to get rolled out because we were getting pushback from teachers. But when you're forced into a situation where you have to do it, you know, um, that becomes a, a five minutes. Okay, different story. So anyway, I'll go. I'll go quickly. So um, so so a lot of great things happened, but I guess um, and then we took on some things during the course of the pandemic that we were planning to punt because we were in the middle of a pandemic. So um, I, I passed this out and I won't go over it. But one of the things that we did, even while we were online and um, and remote is we developed and uh, the core characteristics of a T24 graduate. That was one of the things we felt like we needed to do in order to get focused and clear. So it's one thing to say we have a goal. It's another thing to say how we're gonna get there. So um, we took a look at what did we really want our kids to be able to know and be able to do and who did we want them to be when they walked across the stage. And this is what came out of that work. Um, I wanted to, and I wanted to point that out because, um, you know, it would have been really easy for us to have said, we're in the middle of a pandemic. We don't have to, we can't do this work right now. We have all these other things to do, but it came back to that focus and clarity. And it came back to, we've got to have a plan and our people have to know what the plan is. And so this was the result of that work. And you can kind of, kind of look at that yourself. But what this did, um, is I, th I would say it's innovation in a different way, but it helped helped our parents, our teachers, our principals, our leaders become very, very clear about this is who we want our kids to be. And then from here, we looked at grades three, grade five, grade eight, grade 12, and we put, we solidified what the milestones were, and that's in here. What does it look like when I'm a third grader and I'm T24 ready? What does it look like when I'm a fifth grader? What does it look like when I'm an eighth grader? What does it look like when I cross the stage? And I, I do believe this work has been instrumental in us getting our kids along the path. So um, in conclusion, uh, what I would say to you is that um, as a leader, there are a couple of things that are important. And I don't usually write a bunch of stuff down, but I want to make sure I, I say this. So first of all, the importance of vision. A compelling vision brings people together, right? When people understand where you're going, when people understand the pathway and they understand what the expectation is, everybody rises to the challenge. That's the first thing. The second thing I would say, relationships are key. So you can do this work and do it in a kind, compassionate way. You don't have to tell everybody they're doing something awful and we have to go a different direction. And we didn't do that. You know, we have to honor, honor the past, honor people's work and build upon what the good things that they're already doing. But that means sometimes you have to tell people we're going to not do some stuff to become very, very focused and clear. Um, communication, super, super important in your leadership and um, transparency and building trust. And that kind of goes back to relationships. So 
just to come full circle, and I know I'm out of time, um, I would say um, just as a leader, this has not been easy for any of us to lead over these past several years. But to the extent that you build a great team and you're all headed in the same direction, you're going to be much better off. Uh, that's not to say that, and, and you can be innovative and do that. Mm -hmm. But I would say that being innovative for the sake of being innovative without a vision and without being super clear about what you're about won't get you anywhere. It really won't. And so um, that's, that's sort of my story. And I hope that answered the questions that you all were, were seeking for me or speaking to the points you all were seeking for me to speak to. And I'm happy to take questions if anybody has them. Yeah, any questions? We loved it, right? That was good. Yes. Thank you.